Strega. The name alone sounds intimidating, but with a long-lasting appeal. Which made sense considering these characters are all alluring. Like Takaya, who knows his hotness cannot be contained by a mere top. Denjin is simply the bomb. And Chidori, the hot goth girlfriend, I couldn't wait to romance her and... Oh, I know badly want to play as Junpei. Strega serve as an effective way to represent how we respond to humanity's greatest fear. Since this antagonistic group of Persona users symbolize the flaw of humanity when coming to terms with mortality, this philosophy of Strega is what added depth to the narrative of Persona 3. There will always be denial and anger when dealing with loss, numb from aching weight of the end. And finally, despair drives it to nihility. Alright, so I miss having an evil group of Persona users instead of just one bad guy. You know we can gang up on you, right? Since an opposing group can be much more, well, imposing. The threat alone of knowing we can just beat them by the numbers is enough to provide a challenging battle, both in terms of the narrative and actual gameplay. So it's kinda too bad that Strega, actual fight-wise, didn't put much of a hindrance, especially Jin who just kept showing bombs. We're just getting started. You ain't the only ones who came prepared. Give it up already. Try harder. Use your persona, idiot. And it's ironic that they were more intimidating and did more damage when they were wielding a gun, as compared to a power that can level an entire city. Unfortunately, we never saw a group of evil persona users again in P4 and P5, since the narrative of those two games called for a different set of antagonists. However, Persona 6 can actually bring back a villainous team. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So here's why Persona 6 will have an evil group of Persona users. But before that though, if you want to fight against a sinister team of Persona users, then like this video and join Otaku Define for more Persona content. Also, if you didn't see the warning, since I'll be talking about evil Persona users, then spoilers ahead. Please play the game first. <laughs> So why does Persona 4 and Persona 5 not have an evil group that we can trash? Is it because Adachi pushed them all inside the TV? Maybe they left Akechi in Persona 5 for his edginess. Then Adachi pushed them all inside the TV for bullying Akechi. Hey, I wonder if we can have this two team up for a spin-off. Anyway, Persona 4 and 5 didn't have a group of evil Persona users because of the overall plot of the Persona series. Back in Persona 1 and 2, there are actually numerous Persona users. Some of them can be pretty chill like the Baron of Sushi. Then in Persona 2, Innocent Scene Alone, there are 20 plus Persona users including an infamous artist. So why are there so many Persona users in these two entries? Well, that's because Philemon and Yarlathotep had a bet. Basically, Yarlathotep believes that if humanity is given power, then they would give in to chaos and destroy the world, while Pilemon has faith that humanity will choose enlightenment and growth. So these two were giving out personas all willy-nilly, with Phil cheering the protagonist group of P1 and P2, while Gnarly manipulated June and other members of the mass circle, and granting them the ability to summon dark personas. Of course, the events of Persona 2 led to the demise of Gnarlathotep, proving that Pilemon's argument is right. So by the time Persona 3 came around, Pilemon was already pretty chill and chose to appear as a blue butterfly while letting Igor and the attendants handle the rest. Now the question is, how did Persona users gain their power if the conflict between Pilemon and Yarlathotep is over? The answer is corporate greed. With the Kirijo group's experiments, the Dark Hour was created and as a result, humanity collectively yearned for death and despair. And Nyx kindly accepted the call because she's very polite. And as the mother of shadows, Nyx indirectly influenced the ability of future Seas members to awaken their personas. Because of this tragedy, the Kirijo group fully turned 180 and searched for ways on how to stop the Dark Hour and Nyx, thus creating two types of persona users. One, the anti-shadow suppression weapons, which are the likes of Aegis and Labris, and experimented to make some artificial persona users, who eventually became Strega. Wow, the Kirijo group really created two antagonists in the story. Huh. Hence why in Persona 3, we still had a group of evil Persona users. But that all changed in Persona 4. 
the ability to summon personas is not explicitly granted by any single being. Otherwise, the power is closely tied to the Midnight Channel, the TV world, and each character's personal journey of self-acceptance. So then, who granted the power to enter the TV world? Turns out, it's this guest attendant. Izanami, by fate, granted three important characters in the story the power to enter the TV world. Because of this, she indirectly granted you and Adachi the power of summoning a persona. And when it came to you, who helped his friends face their true selves, he managed to form great allies who would help him in reaching out for the truth. While Adachi was busy toying with his power, Adachi is sourly different from you as he picked to manipulate people instead of collaborating with them, as seen in how he fooled Namatame into kidnapping people that appeared on TV. Adachi is also nihilistic and had a similar desire with Izanami to sow chaos that led to Adachi to act alone, driven by his twisted sense of boredom and entitlement. Similar can be said in Persona 5, where the characters gain the ability to summon personas primarily through their own willpower, rebellion, and awakening to their true selves. If it's easier to summon a persona in P5, what stops us from having an antagonistic group? Well, it's because of Yelda Baoth and his champion. Yaldi sets up an experiment to test humanity's will, beating their desire for control and order against the rebellion embedded by the Phantom Thieves. As part of this little thought experiment, Yelda Baot grants access to the metaverse and the power to summon personas to two key individuals, Ren and Akechi. However, since Yelda Baot is a dirty cheater, he trapped Igor and pretended to be the owner of the Velvet Room to manipulate Ren and the Phantom Thieves. So if both Ren and Akechi were granted the power of the wild card, how come Ren has a group and poor Pancake Boy doesn't? Well, much like Adachi, Akechi distrusted others. Akechi is more focused on delivering his revenge against his father no matter the cost, pretending to be this just detective prince and gaining popularity from crimes he actually committed. Akechi's isolation, secrecy, and cynicism made him unable to form a group like the Phantom Thieves. So if this were the case for both P4 and P5, why am I so certain that P6 has the chance to bring back an evil team of Persona users? Well, it's because of how the plot of Persona 6 is going to be played out. Months ago, it has been spreading that Persona 6 will be about the conflict of two ideologies. Tradition versus Modernization Whether or not the protagonist of P6 with his friends will stand alongside a spectrum of each ideology is to be seen. Will our paint buckets side with preservation? Or will they promote the idea of change? And that exactly is the key. With the existence of these two polarizing philosophies, where each has both positive and negative aspects, it is certain that there will be two groups of Persona users who would choose one ideology over the other. But remember, since P6 has been leaked to be using a verdant color and green in Japan is a color symbolizing harmony, it is likely that the true ending of Persona 6 is uniting these opposing ideologies to strike a balance between preservation and change, embracing progress while respecting traditions. Not to mention, the conflict between preservation and change has been symbolized by a lot of figures over the history. Much like how Nyx symbolized death, how Nyarla Totev craved for chaos and destruction, and why Demi Urge is a cheating crybaby. So figures like Vishnu, who stood for preservation, and Shiva, who symbolized destruction. On the Greek side, we have Prometheus, who wanted to bring innovation to humanity. But Zeus opposed this as he thinks it will break tradition. All in all, Persona 6 is shaping up to be an entry that will bring remarkable improvements and will tell us an amazing fresh story. Persona 6 couldn't come sooner, and apparently rumor says that it will be announced on this year's Game Awards. And they said that Persona 6 will have a dynamic change in its social link system. If you're curious as to how P6 will improve the S-Link system, then watch these two other videos. As always, join Ataka Define for more Persona discussion. This is Math, and stay awesome my dudes.